Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Historian Stitch. Um, it's been a couple weeks, but I am finally back. Um, and as promised in the last video we did on how to um, use a tape loom and how to loom that way, um, we are working on netting today. Netting is basically, at least in the smallest version, something akin to this. Um, honestly, not sure how old this piece is. Um, came from the netting set that was at my third great grandmother's house. Um, she could do it. We don't know where she learned it from. Um, so it's just kind of a, in a weird way, family progression of learning. But I have not learned from any person in the family because after my third great grandmother died, no one knew how to do it anymore. Um, but we have all of the equipment and I found some stuff not only in uh, the various sewing books that I have about netting and the techniques used to make it, but also on Pinterest, oddly enough. Um, I am a very picture-oriented person, so if there is not a picture in a pattern, I have no clue what to do. Um, so finding those diagrams of how to tie the knots properly was extremely helpful. But before we get into showing you a one uh, version of how to make it this time rather than the three I thought we would do. Um, be kind of helpful to know what netting even is. And I am saying netting as in fishnets. Um, occasionally they would use it for veils. Um, a lot of times if you look at uh, different tin types and stuff, you'll see it as dress trims, hair nets. Uh, shawls, different things like that. Um, and of course, you would also be able to use it, especially in the 19th century when all of the patterns were really popular in the ladies' magazines, um, for your curtains, for uh, bags, uh, hanging devices for your plants, things like that. Um, through the ages, it kind of fell out of style and no one knows how to make it anymore, mainly because the Industrial Revolution. As with most things, the Industrial Revolution took a very slow process, though it's much faster than you would think, um, but slow nonetheless, and made it ten times faster and cheaper for everybody to have, so you're not just sitting at home making it yourself. Um, basically made the art form of making it uh, non-existent anymore. Um, so you can go to the store even today and buy netting, um, whether it's the teeny tiny stuff um, that looks more like a gauze or um, different laces that you buy today will have the netting attached to it. Um, there are various versions of it um, in terms mainly of the shuttles that you're using. Uh, the ones that I have from the set that we've got look like this. You've got the U shapes on both ends where the uh, thread is attached um, to your shuttle itself. That way it won't come undone. Um, you've also got versions where it looks basically the same as this one, um, except it's got yay wide and you have a small stick sticking up in the middle where you're wrapping from instead, instead of up here. Um, I will actually put if you go to our Facebook page, I will put a um, picture or two on there attached to this video proper so that you can see what some of the other shuttles look like. I'll try and put them in the comments below for YouTube as well. Um, but that's basically the tools that you would use for this other than your uh, material itself. Um, now the materials used for netting could be thread, they could be twine, they could be uh, yarns, uh, anything malleable. Um, so you could also even do this with something as heavyweight as some metals. Um, not necessarily as useful when it comes to dress trims and stuff, but it was a possibility and is a possibility even today. Um, in terms of the full history of <laughs> netting proper, um, we don't know where it came from. 
it the oldest netting um is from bce era give or take um we're not really sure who made it even in that sense um but basically from what i have gathered um the transition from it being a tool for fishing and um holding things together to something decorative was mainly because of the wives of fishermen um basically it was a men and women alike are making these nets for the fishing process um and the women eventually look at it and go you know this would look really pretty on my curtains or on the dress i've been working on so they take it they make it a little bit smaller a little dainier um and eventually just sew it onto their clothes and blankets and whatever else they want to decorate. So that's basically the history of it. Um, I'm actually going to hit pause here and readjust the camera a little bit so that you can see what I have in my lap. Um, and I will show you how to net a little bit. Um, for me, when I'm netting, it's not necessarily depth just for decoration um in most of the pictures and patterns i've seen for it it is for the upper middle upper class families who are wearing uh netting as trim proper um i have one bodice for reenacting in living history that has netting on it um but past that i use it more for hair nets so this is something that people today um if you're doing it for historical purposes could use for obviously any time frame because of how old it is um but especially for your civil war and 1940s historians um in the uh, mid 19th century you're covering your hair with hair nets uh, they are not yet snoods until the 1940s when they make a comeback, at which point you're more than likely buying it um, from your local store. But if your family was anything like mine, or if you're portraying someone who is the same kind of lower middle class family as mine, um, you'd be making it instead. So it is perfectly acceptable to sit down and make it yourself instead of having to get on Amazon, so that would really be the easiest thing to possibly do. Um, if you feel like being crafty, you can sit down and do it yourself. And I will tell you, most of the shuttles that we have here uh, basically look like uh, whoever was netting at the time in my family went out in the yard, picked up a stick, and whittled it down into the shape she wanted, and then just started using it from there. So at this point I will now hit pause and I will set up the camera a little bit different. Okay so I have the camera set up a little bit different here. Um, to begin with I thought I was going to use black thread but it did not show up on the camera very well at all. Um, so I am using white and you can see I've already got my first five done here. Um, just to kind of make it a little bit easier. And the setup for this, the red uh, cording you see here, is my essentially loom space. Um, I found during the winter um, that netting onto the garment proper is actually the easiest thing you could do, especially if it's a um, knitted or crocheted shawl or blanket of some kind. But if you're going to use it as a trim, this is basically what you're going to do. Um, and this setup is actually based on a 1860s variation. Basically, it's one giant loop. You can see the knot up here. You wrap it around your foot. That way it's uh, stretched out long enough that you can use it. And in theory, uh, you can spin around uh, the loop um, to work on very large pieces or you can leave it right in your lap where mine is now to keep it very small. Um, we're actually going to use six so that means I have one more to make and I can show you guys how to set up this very first row. 
your very first row is going to get cut off, so it doesn't matter how ugly it is, though this row is going to determine what size it is. Um, I have about finger length, or finger width, rather. Um, I use my fingers for sizers usually rather than anything else because I'm not quite coordinated at this yet. Um, in the box, which is basically a shoe box that has all of this stuff in it, um, there are uh, debarked sticks, there are wooden dowels, there are chunks of wood about yay big, big that are square. Um, there are pencils, there's basically whatever um, whoever it was netting at the time could use and had nearby that they could use um, to size different things. So this earlier piece that I showed you early, earlier is about the size of a pencil. Um, your generic um, 2.0 pencil will fit through that, and if you have the eraser taken off, it'll slide right through very nicely, actually. Um, because I'm still learning, I use my fingers so that it's big enough that I can hold. Um, you also want your loops to be big enough for your shuttle to go through. So, basically how you start these, um, you tie just a regular double knot at the top for your very first one and you want it tight enough against your cord that it's not going to come off and resize itself so i can pull on any of these and they won't suddenly get bigger or smaller so basically you're going to double knot all of these bit of a painful process but you wrap it around your finger here at the bottom uh underneath your cord that way you have uh, a way to guide it you go up behind and through, preferably where you want it to go, and you want to keep them spaced about the same. From here, I grab it against my index finger, and through that loop, shove my shuttle through, pull it tight, do it one more time, pull it tight, and that is your first row. You're going to do that across for as long um, as you want. Um, when I did this for the bodice that I made, um, I ended up needing a good yard and a half to two yards of netting. Um, so I had to kind of squish it all onto the loom that I was using at the time. From this stage, you're then going to Get a little more complicated because this first stitch going the opposite direction is going to be the biggest pain, uh, no matter which time you do it or which direction you're necessarily going. That will make more that statement will make more sense when we start going the other way. But basically, you're always going to go up and behind to go through your loops. And to keep these the same size. I'm going to have my finger in here, and it's going to be a finger length from the bottom of the loop that was already there. You pull it against your index finger from behind this time, through the loop and behind. And we have this fairly large loop on the back side, and you're going to toss your shuttle through it. So basically, your finger is in a knot. Pull your finger out, pull it tight, and you have your first knot. Basically, you do this process the entire way across. And I will say that this particular setup is a bit of a pain because you can see it pulling towards me and away from me at different points. Um, I prefer actually using my loom compared to this version, if only because it doesn't move near as much. It also takes some getting used to to go the opposite direction of what your brain wants you to. Um, but basically you have that same 
progression back and forth, hopefully with enough thread to do so. Pull your finger out, pull it tight. It will pull tight. And we have our first official row and you can kind of see the netting starting to form there. Um, the heavier your netting, the um, not the heavier your netting, the heavier your material you're using, the easier it, this will be. Um, yarn is actually one of the easiest things because it's just heavy enough that it will hold itself down, but it's not so heavy that you have to force it to work. But basically, you would do this all the way across, and once you get to your bottom side here, so your very first one that you started with, um, you're going to do the same thing you did with the loop over here, um, where you pull it down just past this row and go the opposite direction. Going from left to right is of course easier than it is going from left from right to left, um, but basically that's the netting process. Um, if I can, once I have better setups and a far better idea of how this works, um, I'll do another video probably and show you guys a little bit better of how to do this. Um, but this is just the general gist of how netting itself works. Um, per usual, if you all have any questions, please ask below. Um, I will do my best to describe and answer them, um, especially with something as complicated as this. Um, but the next thing that I might do is entirely up for debate. Um, I'm going to leave it to you all per usual to tell me what you want to know or how you want to see it per se. Um, I honestly have no clue what I want to do next. So it might just be a history talking video about maybe an aspect of mourning. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens. Not necessarily a how to at that point, but we'll see. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, please ask or comments or criticisms, whatever. Um, please, please put them below. I enjoy, I actually enjoy being critiqued, so please tell me. Just please be a little kind about it. Um, and yeah, I will see you all next time. Everybody stay safe.